So the questions, I don't understand why those of you that didn't do well didn't do well. I don't get it. So, yes, question. Can you put the average scores for each test version? Is that going to be too long yeah. Wow. It, I mean, it's up to you. You know what score you got. You know the grade. You don't have to retake the test if you don't want to. I would try to get 100% if I were you. You have May coming up. May, you're going to have these questions. If you're, at, if you're scoring near 100% now, you're going to score near, uh, you know, uh, you're going to score fairly well on these questions on the end of course exam. Do I have the, 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 ver the different versions, uh, averages? No, because I put all the grades in by percentages into Jupiter, and it gave me the averages there. Uh, I could try to figure that out if you'd like, but I'd have to break it down. You'd have to add it up, and it's a, it's a lot of work. I mean, it'd take me like half an hour to do it, and I just don't want to spend that time. If you absolutely want these to come after school, we can discuss it. Uh, so test version three, we're going to go through it. It covers a lot of the questions on all three versions. All three versions are fairly similar. Uh, there are differences. I test, test version three had the most number of questions, 50 questions. Uh, that's why the people that had test version three got a bonus of 10% because you had more questions than other people. So I thought that was fair. The process of diffusion requires what? Let's go down the list. Cell membrane? Who says yes? Raise your hand if you say yes. Okay, it does not. If you remember our discussion of diffusion, the introduction to diffusion, what example did I use? Or something stinks in a corner. Remember, we, I said we talked about farting, right? There's a reason I talked about that. Perfume, cologne, a dog, a hound dog chasing a, a scent trail. You remember all that discussion? All that was to make sure you understood, and I guess I failed at that, that diffusion, that diffusion is just going from high to low. Say what? Yes. It, it, the answer is C. It, you don't need an aqueous solution. Now, what was the trick here? Here's the, here's the trick. The trick is, I can see how a lot of people that studied very hard, very hard, right? What did they do? They picked all the above. Why did they pick all the above? Because they spent four or five days reading cell membrane, aqueous solution, moving high to low, cell, facilitate diffusion, diffusion, right? All these terms over and over and over and over again. They got in their head and then they saw this question. They automatically picked all the above, right? Do you agree that that's what happened? I can see that. I can't. But you guys got to take a deep breath when you're taking a test. And you got to look at the question and you have to ask yourself, what are they asking me? You have to ask yourself, what are they asking me? It's not always more confusing. It's not always more in-depth. Sometimes it's just very simple. Right? And those are sometimes the hardest questions because you have so many ideas and thoughts in your head and you have to kind of organize that and then choose the best answer. So it is, and the answer is C, right? It's not all the above. And why is it not all the above? Because you don't need a cell membrane and you don't need an aqueous solution. Are we okay with that? Is if there's a conceptual error here, we need to talk about it. I don't want to. I don't want to leave this off till after you take your retake on, on Saturday, right? And then you're still scoring a bad score, and then no one's feeling good about themselves. So let's try to fix this. If the molecular concentration of a substance is the same throughout the space, the substance is at what? Equilibrium B. That's right. That's it. I mean, that's just that simple. Large, has a large concentration gradient? No. If you answer that one, you don't understand what a concentration gradient is. Remember, a concentration gradient is when it goes like... Right? So you get, it goes from high to low, high to low. Then that's a concentration gradient. So it's, it, obviously, if the molecular concentration of substance is the same throughout, then it's, there is no gradient. 
will undergo diffusion. No. Remember? If it's the same, it's what? Isotonic. Isotonic means what? No movement. Will undergo osmosis. No. Right? So we're done. Well, actually, isotonic, really, when we're talking about equilibrium, remember, what are we talking about? There is movement, right? Equally in both directions. So there's no net movement. A type of transport in which water moves across the membrane and down its concentration gradient, from, down means what? From high to low. It's constant. There's a the word it again. I say, I, how many times have I said it? I don't even know anymore. It's con what, what are we talking about? Water. Down its concentration gradient is what? Osmosis. Osmosis. Right? We've, we've been through this over and over and over and over again. The answer is osmosis here. Does everybody see that? It's not simple diffusion. It's not facilitated diffusion. It's not diffusion through ion channels. It is osmosis. The movement, the diffusion of water is osmosis. I think you'll see that this is repeated like God only knows how many times. I, I want in this t On this particular version, I think I, I repeated it, which is why I did, almost didn't want to give you the 10%, but I gave you the 10% bonus because of how many questions, and I know that that impacts your thinking and your stress level, right? When you see there's a lot of questions. So I gave you the 10% bonus on that. But still, I didn't feel, I felt it was fair because I literally repeated the simplest question like five or six times in five or six different ways, right? Net movement of water across the membrane occurs where? This is something, again, I've repeated numerous times. How do things move across the membrane? From hypotonic to hypertonic. Always things move to the hypertonic, right? We've said that over and over again. And so that means, by definition, this is opposite, so that can't be right. Isotonic, it, we know it's not moving if it's isotonic. And through gated ion channels is, again, not appropriate. So um, this is all in the videos thus far. Does everybody agree? Someone say, can someone look up here and say that there's anything here that it's not, has not been covered repeatedly? Okay, so we all agree that this is all stuff that you should have been able to get. All forms of passive transport depend on what? What does the word passive mean? Passive transport. What are the three kinds of passive? This is right out of the study guide. What are the three kinds of passive transport? What are the three that we talked about? There's simple diffusion. Simple diffusion usually occurs, usually occurs with nonpolar, small, and I believe in the video I discussed oxygen gas, I discussed lungs specifically, oxygen gas, carbon dioxide, as examples of small nonpolar materials that pass through membranes easily, right? And we talked about gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide being exchanged along into the blood stream. Question? No. All right. So passive, all forms of trans passive transfer depend on what? Okay, B. The answer is B. So it's the kinetic... Remember, all diffusion osmosis is all about... Diffusion osmosis happens because there's this kinetic energy. This, everything's vibrating. Do you remember me saying that? <coughs> everything's always moving. Everything's always vibrating. And when things are put together, they're close together, they bump into each other, they push each other, each other around, and they randomly go through these openings that we call pores in membranes. So this energy from ATP, that would be active transport. Ion channels would be facilitated diffusion. That's, by the way, that's simple diffusion. Then, it, of course, you have, what's the others for passive transport? Facilitated diffusion. And you can look these up if you don't know what they mean. They're certainly going to be on the, te the retake tomorrow. Simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion. What's the other one that's also passive? Osmosis. Those were the three that were passive. They're in that chart in the study guide. And if you haven't taken a test, make sure you're ready to take the test tomorrow, right? So this is a, a practice for you. 
The structure can move excess water out of the unicellular organisms. I mentioned this. This is one of those four questions that was, that was not really hit a lot, but we did cover it. It's contractile vacuole. Right? That's that vacuole that's, that pumps water out in unicellular organisms so that they can, uh, they can deal with, that, with water coming into them, into them from hypo to hypertonic. So here, carrier proteins don't, you know, are not involved with water. Ion channels are not involved with water. And cell membrane pump also not really involved with water, right? So if, if you see water, there's only one thing you should be thinking about or two. The contractile, if there's something helping it move across the membrane, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be the contractile vacuole. It's one of those things that you see in Chapter 7, right? If you've done your, your homework and you've taken your notes on the chapter, you know it's, they discuss it in unicellular organisms. We discussed it. I mentioned it in class. So contractile vacuoles. The other one that with water you're going to see a lot, and I mentioned this in class too, is aquaporins. Aquaporins are those little channels in the membrane let water in and out. So those are the two, when you're talking about water, if, there's, if water's going to get any facilitation, it's going to be with those two. The contractile vacuole is moving water against this concentration gradient. It's pushing things out. This requires energy. This is active. This aquaporins, this passive. It's one of the, it's one of the facilitated diffusion things. Diffusion of water, right? So plasmolysis of of a human blood cell would occur. What is plasmolysis? It's one of those vocabulary words we discussed. What is plasmolysis? Anybody know? Yeah, not when it takes it, when what? When it loses, it lets it out. When it loses it, when it shrinks up. And we looked at some examples of that. And so it was going to occur when? In hypertonic solutions. Plasmolysis, things, cells shrink, cells shrink in hypertonic solution, but when they shrink so much they can't function more, they die. That's plasmolysis. Death by dehydration of a cell. Lysis, plasma lysis. So isotonic solutions, there wouldn't be any such movement. Hypotonic, it would swell and burst, right? Swell and burst. And, uh, of course, none of the above is incorrect. So hypertonic, when does this happen? When does it shrink so much it's going to shrivel up and die in a hypotonic solution? Sorry, I skipped these, huh? My bad. This is... Uh, this is easy. This is water going, if you want to wait a minute, this is water going into the cell. This one's water going uh, out of the cell. This one's water going uh, in both directions at the same time. It's equilibrium size of time. Which uh, beaker contains hypotonic solution? Hypotonic water going in. This, this one. So it's A. What will occur, what will happen in the egg? It, what will happen to the egg in beaker B if allowed to sit overnight? B, what will happen is it'll shrink, right? Which type of solution causes the egg to swell? That would hopefully be hypo. You understand that, I hope. What is the best explanation as to why the room smelled like vinegar? There's that example that diffusion does not need a membrane. Diffusion of vinegar molecules... Uh, cell must have ways to maintain homeostasis, which is uh, an example of ways that can do this. Maintain homeostasis is all of the above. Homeostasis is keeping things the same. Homeo means the same. All right. That is one of the questions that uh, we only touched on slightly. One of three out of 50 should not have given you too much trouble. All right, thanks. Let's move on to the next question. The model in figure one, there's figure one. Oh, God, how many times have we seen it? You've made it in a 3D model. You colored it. We discussed it until I, we're all ready, until you guys are telling me to be quiet. The model one, figure one on the right, shows small molecules moving through the porous opening. This could be water moving through aquaporins. It could be an ion channel. It could be anything, right? But some kind of channel protein. What kind of molecule would this be? It's a protein, right? We talked, I mean... Right? I thought this was an easy, give me answer. 
I, I, I wasn't sure why people got it wrong. So if you got this one wrong, I got I to gotta wonder. The phospholipids, you know the phospholipids is this. I hope you know that they're this. That's a phospholipid, right? Nucleic acid, there's nothing in the membrane with nucleic acid. That's DNA or RNA, and those are not in the membrane. Molecular sieve, man. Have we talked about that? So it's a protein. All right. Examine a diagram on figure two on the left. Should be on the right, but that's fine. The process illustrated by the neurotransmitter leaving the sending, the neuron. So here's, this, here's some, look at it. Look at this process. Vesicle fuses with the membrane. Remember I told you if there's a line, you, I, I hope you're seeing a membrane like this, right? And out comes this stuff. And we actually had an example of this uh, in actually later on in this exam as well. And then over here, it gets picked up by the ones over here. But see, it's letting this stuff out, isn't it? So which one of these is it? B, exocytosis. It's letting stuff out. It's exocytosis. So it's not endo, because that's letting stuff in. It's not passive transport, because whenever your membranes are fusing and letting things in and out, that's active. It's not protein synthesis. We haven't even talked about protein synthesis yet. And transporter uptake, that's what's going on over here, that the uptake, but you don't know that. We haven't discussed it yet, so you don't have to worry about it. All right, yeah. Yes, you may. Are we all good so far? Yeah. Does anybody find these questions unfair? No. And it, and it is stuff we covered, right? Right. I mean, I'm, don't just say, yeah, if you, if you disagree, I would love to hear from you. Yeah. Like, okay, so active transport can move solutes up a constant... Active transport. What does up a concentration gradient mean? Not from low to high, or from high to low, from what? from low to high. So if it says up, up, the word up is used. The word up is used. So you should be thinking what? Low, oh, low to high. Active transport, does that sound right? Does it? Yeah, it does. I see some people nodding. The answer is yes. So this is right, okay. But we, we're going to check the other answers. Requires a cell to expend energy. Active transport. Do you need to spend energy moving things from low to high? Sure do. Uses ATP as an energy source. Yes, all things in the cell use ATP as, in general as an energy source. Is, it, is necessary, active transport is necessary to allow nerves to function properly. You might not know, it's true. But maybe you don't know that, right? Okay. How do you know this is the answer? You knew at least two of those four were correct. As soon as you know two of the four are correct, what do you know? All of the above. All of the above. I mean, does that make sense? It, it turns out that they're all correct, so that's why it's all of the above. All right, so, so far, I don't see... I, I hope you guys are getting it. If you don't get it, guys... Now's the time to speak up so that you get help, because tomorrow's a makeup or the retake. Yeah. To enter and leave the cell, substances must pass through what? This is as easy as it comes. Come on. Plasma membrane. That's, I mean, that's it. You don't have to. By this time, you should know all the different organelles because you were asked to some, right? You're supposed to be reading the chapter and, and, and taking notes on it. You should know these, but I don't care if you know them or not yet, because that's for next week. If you don't know it, you know what? The plasma membrane. You better know that. Movement of molecules from one area of higher concentration to an area of low concentration is called what? Diffusion. See how I asked this question over and over again? And, it, and, it's, and maybe it's because you didn't know that definition but I don't understand how you didn't know that. And we talked about catalysts, we talked about active transport, we talked about, uh, well, we haven't talked about apoptosis, but that's another story. Phospholipid molecules uh, in a membrane are arranged with their what on the exterior and their what on the interior, inside them, like facing out, both into the cell and out the outside is what? 
That's right. Hydrophilic heads are pointing out. Hydrophobic tails are pointing into it in the inside of the membrane. So the answer is B. A is the same thing. A is not the same thing. Oh, I see it. A says hydrophobic and hydrophobic. So A can't be true because the heads are not hydrophobic. So that's not possible. Nonpolar heads and polar tails. Well, it's actually the opposite, isn't it? See that polarity coming in to bite you in the butt if you didn't get it in the last test? Hydrophobic tails, hydrophilic heads. Hydrophilic, hydrophobic tails, tails are hydrophobic, but they're not pointing out. They're pointing into the membrane, aren't they? So that's not right. And hydrophilic tails and hydrophobic heads, hydrophilic tails, hydrophobic heads, that's not correct at all. Right? All right, so there's only one possible answer. Maybe a little tricky. Maybe it sucked up some of your time. I'm not sure, but I didn't think it was. If you thought it was tricky, again, I'll be here after school today. So, the, in osmosis, water always moves towards the what? Which solution? Always moves up into which solution? Osmosis always moves to what? Hypertonic. Always, os, water always moves towards the hypertonic of the two solutions. Which means what? Greater or lesser? Solute concentration greater. So the answer is B. Hypertonic and greater. Hypertonic solution, greater solute concentration. Maybe you didn't understand that, but hopefully now you got it. Bless you. Facilitated diffusion uses energy. True or false? Well, this, was a, this is one of those questions I really was upset with myself about when I put it on here, I put it on here, it was from a standardized exam, so I said, I'll just put it on there, I don't care, it's what they're going to have to face. I said it over and over and over again, because I knew this question was coming on the test, um, but I still hate the question. I put it on here because that's what they do to you, and I warned you that whenever you see added energy or uses energy, they mean what? Extra energy. Extra energy, in the form usually of ATP, but sometimes concentration gradients or whatever. But they're extra energy. Of course they use energy. If anything that moves is using energy, right? So, but they're talking about extra energy. So facilitated diffusion, facilitated diffusion, does it use any extra energy? No, it does not. It does not. The answer is false. And why doesn't it? Because it's diffusion. It's diffusion. Diffusion is passive. It means no extra energy required, just the energy of the movement of the molecules themselves or what move it across the membrane. Facilitate just means there's a protein there helping it cross, an ion channel, what have you. Are we good? Yeah. Again, that was right out of the study guide, right? So that was out of the study guide, out of the class lesson, out of the reading in the book, out of the questions in the, in the, in the, the reading uh, notes, guided notes. Everything was pointing in that direction. Diffusion of water across selectively permeable membranes is called what? Osmosis. Right? It's osmosis. And as soon as you see diffusion, this is what? I think the fourth time we've seen that same question. So if you got a lot of them wrong, I haven't done a, 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 an item analysis yet, but my guess is you got one or two basic concepts wrong and what happened to you? You just kept messing up. All right. The plant cell is placed in a solution whose, whose solute concentration is twice as great in, in the solution as the concentration of the cell in the cytoplasm. So basically what I asked you to do is to draw it, right? So you're, you're putting this, this cell into this thing. The solute concentration is two times higher outside than it is inside, right? That's what they're saying. So outside's what? Hypertonic. Do you agree? As soon as I see this, I see hypertonic. The solution is hypertonic, outside. Then they ask the question, what will happen to the cell? The cell's gonna do what? It's gonna shrivel. 
Because water is going to go where? Out of the cell. Why? Because it's hypertonic and water moves towards the, the towards hyper, right? So we're going to have the shrivel. The cell's going to shrivel. So it's no changes wrong. Will swell? No. The, swell will shri- the cell will shrivel because of active transport? No. It's osmosis. It's passive. The cell will swell because of active transport? No. Right? We're good? Yeah. All right. Water, uh, rather, red blood cells have salt uh, content 0.9%. My red blood cells in pure water, so that means 100% water. I hope you understand that that's what that means. You're taking a cell and you're putting in 100% water. That means this is hypertonic. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. That's all I need to know. 0.9, pure water. I know... uh, I know automatically, because of the pure water, because of the point nine, I know it's, it's, uh, it's hypertonic outside. Net movement of substance, of uh, the substance occurs uh, in, in this instance of osmosis. Water molecules moves where? Out. Out. Do you all agree on that? Yes or no? Do you see that? If you don't see it, raise your hand now. Say, hey, I don't get it. I'll say I'll say it again in case some of you are real quiet and just don't want to don't want to say anything. And it, it, you see how it says here. Somebody might say, "Well, how do you know that ions don't move?" I don't know they don't move, but what do I do? What do I know? I do know it's what. It's osmosis, and when I see osmosis, what am I thinking? Water moving. So if water's moving, I know for sure it's not salt ions moving, and it's not salt ions moving. So this, that's why those two are wrong, because we're talking about osmosis. Again, what, am I, what do I have to do? I have to read the question and say, what are they asking me? What am I being asked here? Because they could ask me all kinds of things. What are, they, what are they talking about? Let me look at the context clues. Let me look at what's going on here. So hypertonic water moves out, so that's it for that. All right, I hope you got that. You see hypertonic outside? Water always moves towards the hypertonic solution. If the solute can't move, right? All right, moving on. The key factor, distinct, what key, which key factor distinguishes organic compounds from inorganic compounds? That's just a, one of those re, throwback questions. Which is it? Organic compounds contain carbon. That is the definition of, of, of organic compounds. That was just a question from the last chapter. I wanted to know if you were still paying attention. The rest of these are, let me say this. It's, they're, it's kind of tricky because this one is, these are, these, are, these are true, okay? These are true. You're right, the organic compound, there are organic compounds that contain hydrogen, yes. There are organic compounds that, that, but are organic compounds the only ones that have hydrogen? No. Organic compounds provide energy for the cell. Okay, that's true. But is, is it only organic compounds that are involved in energy? No, there's not really. I mean, mostly yes. Organic compounds are the building blocks of cells. That's true. It's very true. But which is the best answer? What makes organic compounds distinct? Like if I see an organic compound, whether it's in a cell or outside a cell, because not all organic compounds are in cells, what makes organic compound really special? It has comp- all the all organic compounds contain what? Carbon. No matter what it is. So don't forget that. In fact, that's why we're called carbon-based organisms, carbon-based life forms. Yikes. Movement of water across the selective permeable membrane is known as what? Jeez, dude, how many times? How many times, guys? If you just would have got that right, you would have got to see. You know what I'm saying? I don't... I, I, I literally repeated the same question over and over again. Why I, I didn't feel bad that there were more questions on this version. The substance that moves across the cell membrane without using a cell's energy is what? A substance that moves across a cell membrane without using a cell's energy tends to move where? Away. 
away from the area that's more concentrated, right? Diffusion happens from what? High to low. What is this? This is just a different way of saying the same thing. High concentration to low concentration. You had to read. <gasps> yeah, you had to read. And you hopefully went through the easy ones quickly because you would have run out of time if you didn't, right? That's why I tell you, get the easy ones done first. Come back to the ones that require more reading or more thought. You, get, you have to manage your time on exams. This is number one. This is version three. There's a lot of the same questions. They, there were questions that were copied. They were all, di all three versions are different, but you're going to see repeated questions. Yes, ma'am. Again, I, got, I get these from old exams, from standardized exams, from the exam questions you're going to face at the end of the year. Which of the following is an example of active transport? None of the above. All of these are passive transport. Remember I listed them in the beginning? Facilitated fusion is passive, osmosis is passive, diffusion is passive. This is, uh, act, this, none of these are active. All right, moving on. Osmosis uses energy, true or false? Quick, true or false? False. Easily. Now, those of you that are overthinking it are thinking, well, wait a minute, there is energy being used, the molecules are moving. Yes, so you're right. There is energy, but what is it that they're talking about? Extra energy. Don't mess that up. Because they, again, this is stuff, these are questions they ask. By they, I mean the state and the, and the ACT and SAT. Which of the following would diffuse through a cell membrane the most easily? Small and nonpolar, D. Small and nonpolar. Small and nonpolar. They diffuse easily. Oxygen, carbon dioxide. Small and nonpolar. Small and polar, you're right, it does diffuse through the membrane, but it's not the easiest to get through the membrane. Large and nonpolar, no. Large and polar, no. They, they require what? Endocytosis. Right? A nursing... A nursing infant is able to obtain disease-fighting antibodies, which are large protein molecules. <coughs> now, why do you think they said large protein molecules? Why did they say that? Say that? Right, so you know it's not permeable. And when you see large, what are you thinking? You see large protein, large solid. What are you thinking? If I, I, it's not going to go too easy. How's it getting in? I mean, as soon as you see large protein... Extra energy? What else? I hope at some point you start thinking phagocytosis, endocytosis, right? And it has to end through, end, endocytosis must be occurring. So this is endocytosis. This can't be osmosis, that's water. Passive trans is not passive because it's large, it's going to require energy to get through. Uh, because it has to be endocytosis. Exocytosis is leaving the cell. This is entering the cell. Do you see it says entering? Mm -hmm. Entering the cell. And diffusion is not. It's the movement of, of small, non, usually small nonpolar, but by, from high to low, with no extra energy required. Zoologists discover that the blood uh, cells of a certain African lungfish were much slower to swell or shrink with water when faced with changes in blood solute concentration a useful adaption to drought and dehydration, right? So water, so the lungfish, is, it doesn't swell very much or shrink very much. It's hard for water to get through that, that membrane. It's much more waterproof. Does that make sense? So researchers suspected that this might have something to do with the number of which one of these? What's going to make it more waterproof? ATP? No. What would have, how could ATP make it more waterproof? What's responsible for letting things in through the membrane and out of the membrane? Proteins, right? Proteins. And enzymes are things that catalyze reactions, so that's not it. Phospholipids are what, they are the barrier. So it's the only possible answer. Let's just see. It says aquaporins. What does it say? Proteins <laughs> 
reading, reading. So that is the answer, guys. Freshwater paramecium is placed in salt water. So if you're placing it in salt water, what do you think is hypertonic? The outside salt is hypertonic. So which way is water going to be moving? Out. Out. Do. That's it. Boom. Which of the following would, mostly, would, would most likely occur? An increase in action by the contractile vacuole. The contractile vacuole takes water out of the cell. So that can't, it, the water's already going out. Why would you increase water going out? That doesn't make sense. The cell is shriveling up. Help me, help me. Oh, okay. So swelling is not going to occur because this water's leaving. Swelling's not going to occur. It's not going to burst because water's leaving, not coming in. So what's the answer? Shrivel is the only one that's possible. Again, what's this based on? So, osmosis. Like it's a repeated, repeated question. The manufacturing company dumps its waste into a nearby pond. The water is found to paralyze a contractile vacuole in certain proteins. A biologist looking for at these organisms would find that these proteins do what? Contractile vacuole doesn't work. What does a contractile vacuole do? It takes water from inside to out, it pumps water out, it's a water pump, out of the cell, for a single cell organism. This is one of those questions, if you got wrong, I wouldn't have minded, because you, this would have taken, this should have been the last question you did. Well, it gained water and burst. Why did it gain water and burst? Because it couldn't pump the water out. It can't pump the water out because that, that chemical stopped it from working, right? So lost water and shrunk, that doesn't make any sense. Have water, the whole point is the water, that molecule's not, that contractile vacuole is not pumping water out. So it wouldn't have lost more water, but it gained more water. Died of malnutrition, what? Have died because waste have built up in the cytoplasm. That doesn't make sense, think about the problem set are surviving but are unable to reproduce. Doesn't make sense. The molecules responsible for membrane transport are proteins. Done. Moving on. I'm not even going to go and explain the rest of these. These are just this not even possible. This one says, uh, you're in a lab, special balloon. We know this. We did this lab just two days ago, so you should now you should certainly know it. Uh, 80% Water, uh, the solution is 80% water, 20% uh, sucrose, 40% inside the balloon, right? Oh, no, the beaker is 60% water, right? The beaker is 60% water. The balloon is 80% water. Where is water going to go? From 80% to 60%, right? From 80 to 60. From inside the balloon out into the container, right? So water will leave the balloon, is the answer. Do you agree? Yeah. It's certainly not. Water will enter the balloon. Sucrose will leave. Sucrose is not moving. They told you that. Sucrose will enter the balloon. No, thank you. Moving on. Sodium, calcium, potassium would be, would, have, would be transported into the cell using what type of transporter? Let's go through the list. Uh, osmosis. No, that's water. Exocytosis. That's leaving, but that's for big particles. Endocytosis, that's coming in, but also big particles. The only one left is passive. That's your answer. Moving on. Here are these three things. One, 37 is which? Which is 37? Stop putting things away. Which is 37? A, hypotonic. It's B. Water's going into the cell. Water's going, water goes into where it's more hypertonic. That means that this is, that if it's going in, it's hypotonic. This middle one is what? Isotonic. Isotonic and hypertonic, obviously, is the last one because water's leaving. All right. By the way, this is plasmolysis. There it is, shrinking up and dying. Match the direction of the net movement of cells, the direct mo movement of the one that, uh, that here, right? So simple diffusion, passive transport. Simple diffusion, passive transport. So that's D. Moves, uh, moves solute against the concentration, that's active, that's B. 
Diffusion uh, with the help of a transport protein, that's facilitated, that's E. Diffusion of water, that's osmosis, that's E. There it is again, diffusion of water. Uh, how oxygen and carbon dioxide enter and leave the cells? They're small and, unpol and nonpolar. Passive transport, D. Uh, ha uh, help by aquaporins? Anybody? Helped by aquaporins. Passive transport, D, it's osmosis. Or you can say C. C, osmosis, right? Endocytosis. It's active transports, B. All right, move on. Last question, last question set. You may not have known 47. Maybe you didn't know that. But you still should have got all the answers right. 49 is what? Protein channel, A. 48 is what? The heads, C. 50 is what? The tails, D. Leaving you with what? B. It's the only one that's left. It's a carbohydrate chain attached to a protein. So it's a, that's part of the external side of the membrane. That's that ABO blood group we discussed in class. That's it. Those are the answers. That's what you have to be able to do tomorrow. You should have been able to, if you need help, I'll be here today after school. You have your videos. You have your book, you have your reading, you have everything else. You see that everything on the test, on all three versions of the test, is stuff that we've covered in class. There should be no question. Have a good day.